All right, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. The wane in Spain falls mainly on the plains. The ants in France stay mainly in your ponds. Don't use a toaster connect. You're right. Oh, you know what? So I can't see quite yet. I have to skip the ad. Okay, skip the ad. So hopefully you see okay. Everything's great. PJK can see me, four, five, six. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to Trade Farm Payrolls Live. Number what? Number 150? <laughs> 150 bots. Oh my god. That's amazing. Whoop whoop. That's 12 and a half years. Amazing. So thank you very much to FX Street for being wonderful hosts. We're very lucky to have FX Street. Such an amazing resource. And I'm very honored and proud to have worked with them for many years. Uh, they've been gen very generous with me doing special webinars, doing this webinar, um, webinars of the month, and lots and lots of awards. I was Forex Speaker of the Year 2016 at FX Street. Just really love working with them. And, and I must say it again, before we get going, 12 and a half years ago when we were planning this webinar, we said as a group um, that we wanted something different. We wanted something more than just a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. We want to do something radical, something that hadn't been done before. Yes, this was 12 and a half years ago. We wanted to have real charts up and running, live market, do live analysis. The news is going to come out. The market's going to freak out. And I stay calm and focused and collected, and I teach you the things that you're supposed to be learning, things like patience and discipline, hardcore technical analysis, understanding of this fundamental event and other fundamental events that you should analyze, central banking policy. All of this was really important. Also, back then, Forex was brand new, Wild West kind of stuff. There were a lot of scam, um, scam artists and scumbags and all that kind of stuff trying to sell you stuff. Um and so we thought this would be a cool way if you were with me for three hours. That's why, by the way, that's why it's three hours. Like, if they just ask Wayne questions for three hours, then they're not over there with that <laughs> scam artist, right? So anyways, that's that's really how it all started. We're like, we'll make it truly educational. We'll make it super long so that they, they stay. We'll make it special and all that kind of stuff. And once again, to thank you, FX Street, for making it special uh, 150 months in a row. And they, they have awesome moderators too, right? There's no moderator like no moderator like no moderator I know. So anyways, thank you, moderator. Thank you, FX Street. And thank you, you guys. Whew. I'm the best coach. Woohoo! I'm the best coach. Good. That's cool. Right on. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. So. We got a non-farm payrolls event to do today. That's in about an hour. The news is going to come out and whoop, whoop, whoop. The number's going to be good. That's what everyone's thinking. ADP was hot. ISM was hot. So why not a hot AD, uh, uh, non NFP, right? Why not a hot NFP? Probably. Now, if it's not, that's going to be the new shocker, okay? Also, at the same time, Kitty Cad, the Canadians, eh? They're releasing their own jobs report because... Why not? Good time, right? So um, we're going to have that double whammy again. It doesn't always happen, but I like this one because ISM services came out so early. What was it, Wednesday? It was Wednesday, right, that ISM services came out? Um, and that's an important number because it gets used in the model when you're building your models and predictions for what NFP is going to be. So lots of people had opportunities to build trading models because they have enough information. So this is like, and this is October. The models are going to be accurate. Everyone's in the game. This is, you know, everyone's here for NFP 150. So uh, I think this is going to be a really good NFP. Yeah, cool. 
So, I guess I should introduce myself. Hello, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Who? TradersWay.com. Yeah, visit TradersWay. You can open up an ECN account. You can open up a variable spread account. You can open up a fixed spread account. Now, you say, Wayne, well, why would I need a fixed spread account? Well, what if you're scalping the news? Sp the interbanking system has spreads that widen, right? So sometimes a lot, right? But that's not necessarily the broker doing that. That's the interbanking system. So if you're trading when everyone else isn't trading, the market's less liquid and you're going to have to pay more to attract the business, right? Just kind of normal stuff. But a fixed spread, you know exactly what it's going to be. Now, it's going to be a little bit more than the variable spread, but you don't care if you're only using that fixed trading account around news events so that when you pull the trigger, you always know it's two pips no matter what. So that's kind of cool. Variable spread, you always get a better deal. So when you're not trading news events, that's usually the best thing. If you hate spreads and all that kind of stuff, you want an ECN account, we got that for you. It's your way, a trader's way with Trader Wayne. So trader, tradersway.com. With that being said, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So I have a surprise. I have a surprise. I didn't tell FX Street about this. Would you like to would you like the little surprise? FX Street doesn't even know about this. They're gonna they're gonna go, what the where do you get that? Check this out. I have a video from just after a non-farm payrolls event in 2006. I don't think it was the first one, but I think it was like the third or fourth NFP here with FX Street when it was over. Because put this in your brain here. It was before webinars existed. It's that long ago. Okay, <laughs> so when it was done, I made a recording to talk about what we did in the live event at FX Street. I think it was October 2006, like, pew. so I have a video of this, and I want you to, to notice one thing, how little my charts have changed in 12 and a half years of doing this, uh, this event. In fact, they can't, they may not have actually changed much at all, right? Even the disclaimer, I don't know, in this video, I'll probably say something like, uh, let me remind you that the purpose of this training is education. This is not learned service. I'm not here to make trade recommendations, but I will conduct technical and fundamental analysis, and I'll do so in real time, bit by bit, candle by candle, with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans that are New York trading session. If you trade along with me using a demo card, then regardless of whether trade plans are successful or not, you will have an opportunity to learn. Trading is investing is risky and not appropriate for everyone. Past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. That was this, the disclaimer I made 12 years ago. You look, Luckily, I don't need to do it again. But check this out. This is going back 12 years. Notice the similarities between what we do now and what we did back then. Wayne McDonald. Today is Friday, October 6, 2006. View of the live non-farm payrolls event brought to you by FX Street and FX Bootcamp. Oh. Markets look like right before the non-farm payrolls report was released. Okay. Now, a couple of things that I mentioned before NFP was released. First of all, the report was expected to come out poorly. There were supposed to be uh, poor numbers. Now, how poor, nobody really knew, but they figured it was going to be bad. Okay, so that was kind of pricey.
bring in a fundamental announcement, technically. Is really? I'm, it's not coming from my mic, though. Conservative, repeatable trades. I need to lower my risk. Conservative, repeatable trades. I need to lower my risk. This is the stuff I was telling you 12 years ago today. Isn't that crazy? Neat stuff, right? So I'm sorry. I don't know why there was an echo. I even muted my mic to make sure my mic wasn't picking up the sound from the card and so I apologize for that. But my point is I don't have a new strategy of the day or the week. I, ha I don't have anything. I wrote a book 10 years ago, that kind of stuff. Um, but still, what I do today is what I did 12 and 15 years ago. That should be, I hope, impressive, first of all. Second of all, it means that it works, that you don't need something crazy or proprietary. You don't need to know the lunar cycles, the migration of elephants. You don't need to know, all, right? So here's what it is. Long-term technical analysis and fundamental analysis of economic data, which leads to our understanding of central banking policy for the different currencies. What it all comes down to is understanding central banking policy at the major central banks around the world. That's why we care about non-farm payrolls. Non-farm payrolls in of itself isn't that special. It's the trend in non-farm payrolls and the, the trend in employment, things like how long are people working, how much are they earning, is there a change in in wages is there a change in the work hours right that kind of stuff what does it mean for the near future because if income right because jobs lead to income and income if you believe the income is going to be there in the future and in particular if you believe you're going to be making more income in the future the marginal propensity to consume changes so then that will affect things like retail sales and same store sales is what you look at. And if that happens and your the consumers are all buying stuff, then companies are going to need to make stuff. So they need to order stuff at the factory. So you get factory orders and durable goods and all that kind of stuff. And then other companies need to move this box over here and that box over there. So there's services and accountants get jobs and banks get jobs financing all this trade all that kind of stuff and then some workers will, will be able to make things cheaper in another country so that there's a comparative advantage and all of a sudden some money goes there and some money comes here and they're better off and we're better off and this global trade now is for an exchange because money needs to be exchanged to make all that happen well going all the way back down What's the central bank going to do here in the United States to maintain a stable economy and stable inflation? That's called monetary policy. Well, we, what monetary policy is appropriate for this economy? Well, I don't know. Give us the economic data so I can figure out things like wages and incomes and marginal uh, propensities to consume. And so therefore we look at retail sales and new orders and and jobs and income and wages and inflation, CPI, PPI, PCE, GDP, it all comes down to one thing. What, if anything, is the central bank going to do soon? That's the most important question. And you do that for the United States of America and for, for the Canadians, right? For the British? The French, no, forget the French, but all the Euro, the other Europeans just kind of smash them together with the Germans. That's cool. Uh, but it's really the Germans we care about, right? Um, all that kind of stuff. And you put all this together, the Aussies, the Kiwis, you know, put it all together. What are these individual central banks going to be doing? Because that, uh, to manage their economy, and that should tell you if money is going to an economy or if money is going away from an economy. And that, going, the money going to and coming from, 
When money crosses the border to be exchanged, supply and demand changes valuation. And this is how we make money. Okay? So this, ind this individual NFP, yeah, it's going to move the market a little bit. So what? Is it on trend? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the number's probably going to be good. Why? Because the other last 42 in a row have been pretty good. Look at the trend, bro, right? Then you can speculate a little bit and say, well, you know, I'll make some assumptions. It should be pretty okay because I looked at ADP. I looked at the trend at uh, non-farm payrolls. I looked at the trend in weekly jobless claims. Then I looked at the employment subcomponent of ISM services. And then to, to measure recent layoffs, I used the Challenger Christmas and Gray report. Whoa. What did he just say? What? Yeah, I just predicted how to get the non-farm payrolls number, right? That's how you get it. You're like, well, Wayne, could you write all that down? Yeah, I did that five or six years ago for you. So on FX Street, I wrote an article called How to Predict How to Predict and Trade the Employment Situation Report, something like that. And it has all that so two different scalping methods and all that kind of stuff on top of all that. All right, so that's where we're going. Fundamental analysis, technical analysis. Now, what does technical analysis do? Helps you identify the price in which you might want to buy and sell, and then gives you the trigger to pull the trigger. Trade. That's all it is. But if you don't know long-term charts, if you don't know fundamental analysis, you're, you're probably pretty frustrated with your results. Let me put it into poetry. Let me tell you about heartache and the loss of God wandering, wandering in hopeless night. Out here, there are no stars. Out here, <laughs> we're profitable. I don't know, like, look, your loss of God is like you find it almost hopeless. Wandering, wandering in endless night. Well, maybe the MACD will save me. Maybe the stochastics will save me. Maybe I should learn Elliott Wave. Uh, maybe I should do some new scalping. Maybe I should hedge all my losing trades. You're like, oh my gosh, just, just, just stand still for a second. <laughs> right? Whoa, 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 whoa. I will teach you everything you need. And we'll do, we'll cover a lot of it here. Okay. Um, today, I have three hours with you, besides the news, so I can really, really help you if you get involved. I ask you one thing, please visit tradersway.com, open an account. A demo account takes you a minute, come on, please. And the rest, I'll, I'll do whatever I can in our three hours together uh, to make this informative uh, for you. So, stay involved, ask questions and all that kind of stuff, and we'll go. So in the next half an hour, I'm basically going to prep you to do this, the, uh, the high volatility event-driven strategy. We do it every month. Um, and then once the news comes out, we get through the uh, Canadian jobs report and U.S. jobs report, then uh, I'll have like two hours, basically, that I can help you. Okay? If you can, you, right, you can download what's in here. Okay, does that sound good? Everybody happy? I need clarity. We all need clarity, brother. <clears throat> Hang on, just uh, I want to get my uh, basic PowerPoint together. Are you ready to be swept off our feet? Come on. Little slow. Okay. Cool. Right on, Kev. But, ah, happier than a pig in mud. <laughs> That's right. What do you know? What kind of whiskey do you normally drink in the morning? That's funny, Roger. All right, cool. So just basics here. 
I use a combination of 2155 EMA to tell me the direction of the market and the speed of which it's going. So when prices, when 21 is below the 55, technically speaking, the market is bearish. So you're like, whoa, 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 Wayne, Wayne, what, what do you mean by market? Well, it's sort of subjective. People used to ask me, they're like, hey, Wayne, how were the markets today? And I used to say, well, for, you know, for about a half an hour, I shorted, and then for an hour and a half, I was long, but then I hit resistance, and then I shorted again, and then it kind of moved sideways for a while. Then that news came out, and then it, and they're like, oh, man, it's too much info. So I say, oh, well, the markets were down. And they're like, great, thanks. Right? So this answers that question. What is the market? Well, that's sort of like shorter term, medium term, uh, med let's say medium term, what's happening. So like if you're trading on a 15-minute chart, what's happening over the next four hours, 12 hours, that kind of thing. Okay, so when the 21 is below the 55, by definition now, not by opinion, by definition, the market is bearish, okay? So ideally, I want to look to sell. Now, if you're below the 21, you're bearish and aggressive. Once you break through this area, you are no longer aggressive. Now, you might be bearish, but you're looking for double bottoms. You're looking to take profit at this point because the market is slowing down, okay? Now, for triggers... I use the 5.8 to take uh, to sell in a falling market. So here I already know I want to sell, and you can see it was bearish even the previous period. So I was already bare. I need, an, I need something to tell me I can sell. That's what that 5.8 cross is. So I'm selling in a falling market. This is price action now. Well, not price action, but price forces, right? So 5.8 cross is down in a falling market, sell. 5.8 cross is up in a falling market, take profit, you're out. Okay, now when it gets back to this 55, you have, an, you have permission if you want to, to sell the 5A cross down, but you got to be careful. You're no longer aggressive. You're conservative. 21 is dead to me. 55's in control, and the 55 says, don't be shocked if we double the bottom here. Don't be shocked if we hit support and bounce, okay? But you have permission. You can sell if you want, so you would sell here and then take profit. Okay, you got it? This sets your short-term bias. 5A cross is trigger in, trigger out. Trigger in, trigger out. Without the moving averages, everything else is nonsense. I use a 200 EMA to analyze long-term trend. Sometimes I use Bollinger Bands. I haven't used them uh, in quite some while. I, I found like so many people were misusing them. Some expert somewhere taught them how to use Bollinger Bands. But here's the thing. I'm so terribly old that I learned how to trade Bollinger Bands from John Bollinger. Yeah. And he, very often in his stuff, he's like, I never said that. You know, common, common knowledge on how to trade Bollinger Bands. John Bollinger would say, I never said that. That's, that's not what it means. <laughs> so be careful. So after a while, I'm like, you know what? So many people are coming to me with bad advice. I'm just going to really stop using them it, because it just forget it. You don't need it. That It's not that important. Same thing with MACD. Gerald DePel was the person that taught me how to, how to use MACD. Right? Those, that's how I learned these things. But anyways, uh, Bollinger Bands, you can consider that. If you don't want to consider volat uh, volatility, I kind of like to substitute it for volume. High volume trading, low volume trading, okay? But really, at the end of the day, it's probably not necessary, right? Right? Hey, there's some there's some guys that use two or three Bollinger Bands, and somehow they think that makes sense. Um, sounds pretty ridiculous to me. Oh, my God, look at that. Three standard deviations. You know what it has to do now? No, it doesn't have to do anything, bro. So, anyways... Uh, we use these oscillators. I speed the stochastic, uh, oh, sorry. I slow the MACD down. And what this tells me is overbought and oversold conditions for the market. I speed stochastics up. And that tells me overbought and oversold conditions for price. So if you recall now, when I put all this together, you're like, Wayne, look at all the wiggly lines. I can't keep up with this. All right, fine. You should be able to. 
21 is below the 55-year bears. Sell 5A crosses down, take profit, 5A crosses up. Done. Next, right? Well, what about this stuff? MACD tells me overbought and oversold conditions. Stochastics show me overbought and oversold conditions for price, right? So the 21.55 is market. The 5.8 is price. MACD is market. Stochastics is price. I'm using multiple ways now to separate market forces from price action. And the whole point of this, guys, is not all these squiggly little lines. In fact, you can get rid of all these if you really want to. It's not a problem. I have no problem if you got rid of all this. But it is helpful because I'm trying to separate and distinguish from each other market forces and price action. Because I want to say, hey, the market is bearish. I'm best off in these market conditions to sell at resistance. I want to sell in a falling market. Now you might say, sir, yes, sir, Captain Obvious, sir. Right? Yeah, but you're not doing it. That's the funny thing. Right? So that's where we're trying to get to. I, over the next two hours, we can go through all of that. We can do multiple time frame analysis. Uh, and I can show you pivot points and all that kind of stuff, right? What's our time? Yeah, we still got time. Okay. It's so overbought. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> how, how can I set a trailer? Uh, sell it? Yeah. Well, let's, let's do the scalp first. I don't, for, here's the other thing, Alexander, too. I don't use trailing stops. Um, I can get you if you want. I use an OCO uh, EA. And what that does is it automatically drops a stop and a limit order automatically when I enter a trade. And then, you know, of course, you can set them so they're what you want. So I'll have one sometimes for swing trading and I'll have other ones for scalping, other ones for spot trading. But the bottom line is when a, an order hits uh, the market, it goes stop limit. And then you can drag and drop them whenever you want. But as far as automatically trailing, I don't like that because I like to make decisions. I don't like automated because if you put on like a 30 pip trailing stop, you're you're deciding to throw away 30 pips. I'd rather say I'm going to move my stop when my risk increases, but I'm going to let this run and hit my target. When I hit my target, I'm out. So I don't need to trail. Like trailing just tells me you don't know the market. Right. So anyways, that, that, that's all. I, uh, that's that's why I don't have a great answer, because I don't use trailing stops. But I can get you the OCO EA and, and, and stuff like that. Um, would anybody like my chart templates, my profiles, my indicators, my EAs, my pivot points? Uh, basically, my entire MT4 setup. I'll let you answer that and I'll just move on to the presentation because I think there's about a 20 second lag here. All right. So this is how we're going to trade the high event, uh, uh, high volatility event driven strategy, otherwise known as non-farm payrolls. Non-farm payrolls has a lot of volatility associated with it. We are not going to fight it. We're not going to assume anything. I don't care if the number's hot. I don't care if the number's weak. Uh, we're going to let the market decide direction. It's just a scalp, bro. Get over it. Okay. So when the market moves after the number comes out, number comes out 310, woohoo, right? Great, whatever that means. Does that mean it's going to go up or go down? We'll, we'll see. We'll let the market. So we'll watch it on a one-minute chart. Also, use a five-minute chart, guys. You'll probably get set up some both. One's a quick scalp. The other one's a medium-term scalp, okay? Either way. You got to be on the ball. There's no time for a group hug, committee meeting, all this kind of stuff. You got to be ready to go. So, in the first three minutes of the news release, in this example, you get green, 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 green. Woo! -hoo! The number was probably good. Great. Does that mean you buy now? No. Don't buy when it's taking off, right? So, all you say is, I need a retracement. But the market's reaction to the news is bullish. Therefore, I want to be a bull too. Doesn't mean it's true, doesn't mean it's right. You're just simply scalping 
the reaction or response to the headline number of non-farm payrolls. It's just a scalp. Like I said, get over it. It's not long-term fundamentals. You're not putting your personal opinion. And, you know, my name is Wayne McDonald, and I approve this trade. No, it's just, it's just a scalp. Get over it. Boom. Look, it went up. Buy it. All right? Sometimes it goes up, hits resistance, crashes, and reverses, right? Well, this is why I use a stop loss. So, for example, all we say is, look, it went up, and this line here is going to be important because the news reacted to this line, and then it dropped. So, in my opinion, one of two things are likely to happen. We revisit this line, and we break it, or we never revisit that line, and this drops like a ton of bricks and goes red, 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 red. In that case, you'll lose money. But put your stop just below this low. How many pips are you losing? So if you go long, let me get this here. If you go long somewhere in there, let's say 75, and you put your stop down here just below 53, look, you're risking 25 pips. So raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do not have permission to lose more than 30 pips on this particular scalp. If I lose more than 30 pips on this particular scalp, I am not paying attention to the rules of engagement, and I will get myself killed, and nobody will care. It's all my own damn fault. However, I am skilled, I am patient, and I am disciplined, and I will wait for a good entry. I will put a stop no more than 30 pips away, or I will not trade under these conditions. So help me God. Boom. Okay. So in this case, look, you entered, but maybe you didn't get a great entry um, or it went a little lower and then you entered. But the thing is, this is not a perfect entry. This is not a perfect example. I feel like I should have said Sam, I am, right? <laughs> I did always somewhere in there. This is not a perfect thing. This is not a perfect example, right? But anyways, somewhere in there, you make a decision. You're like, okay. It went down to the 786, but it, that held for a minute. Then it held again for another minute. Then it held an again another minute. Then it held again another minute. Dude, this is scalp. Why are you waiting five minutes, right? So you could be long here, drop a stop. You only have a 15 pip stop, right? And now the next goal is in the next three or four minutes. You should have the opportunity to move your stop to break even, or you're probably going to lose your money. But what do you care? It's only 15 or 20 pips, right? But this is the line in the sand we drew earlier. So we either kind of come up here, tickle it, and then drop like a ton of, ton of breaks and it double bottoms. Well, because that is very likely, it's not expected, but it's likely. When If you're in here, move your stop to break even before we challenge the line. Oh, I'm sorry. I should be over here. Sorry. Yeah, see, there's such a lag that it took you a while. So let's go back here. Sorry. Okay, you're looking for a pullback. Somewhere in here, you end up wanting to buy. So you buy it. You put your stop down here. Three, four minutes goes by, or five or six minutes goes by. We're approaching the line in the sand. Move your stop from below the lowest low to your break-even point. So you're either a hero if it breaks to the upside and you get paid, or you're a zero when it comes back and you get knocked out of break even. Okay? I apologize, guys. There's a lot going on here. All right. So in this case, you should have no risk on the table when you approach the line, and boom. Ta-da! You get paid. <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, that's how we're going to do it, son. And notice, you know, these these uh, charts, I think a lot of these are out of my book. The book was released, what, 10 years ago? But I wrote it 11 years ago. And once again, look at My charts have not changed. What does that tell you? that I don't do anything different. I do the same thing as 15 years ago. This means it's something I can teach you and you can do yourself. And we can even simplify this further. 
Um, we don't really even need these oscillators. We don't really need, right? So we can get rid of that if you want. Oh, there's the volley bands. I don't, you know, I don't even care about the volley bands that much. In fact, we can get rid of almost anything on here, e even the moving averages. We can get rid of all of that um, because I can still do my analysis. I can still identify support and resistance visually, right? But when I connect this to this, this is support and resistance of price. I'm just connecting price. Okay? doesn't tell me anything else except at this price there there's been challenges I need to separate market from price remember moving averages separate market uh, forces from price action oscillators separate market forces from price action but I also use like visually here support and resistance using price but I now because that's a leading indicator by the way okay these are areas in which we may want to trade in the future, right? I also use another leading indicator because, you know, man cannot live on lagging indicators alone, right? So I also add to this basic setup. And again, you can delete all these moving averages and not use them at all. I'm okay with, as long as you can identify support and resistance of price, okay? But I also use pivot points. The, the, little, the, little, the little areas, the, these are weekly pivot points. And then this bigger, bigger area up here. See, there's a, there's an area up here, big gray zone, gray, gray, black, gray, gray. Those are monthly pivot points. So I'm using these moving averages. You notice I killed the Bollinger Band. Don't really need it. Killed the MACD. Killed the Stokes. Don't really need them. I could really even kill these moving averages, right? I don't even care. So what I'm really using is support and resistance of the market. That's what pivot points are telling me support and resistance of price and you'll see they're very important in fact some of these may have been created by the pivots and you're like oh well maybe that's why that support and resistance is there and then it just all came together someone else had those pivot points and you did not now you know why the market behaved the way it did so what do you think that's what we're going to do for the news. These are the tools I'm going to need to do that. Would anybody like to download all my chart setups, all my profiles, which is hundreds of charts, all my indicators that I use, the EAs, the watermarks, the OCOs, MACD with the proper colors, moving averages with the proper colors, two sets of pivot points monthly and weekly. And if, would you would you like that? It even I even made a video for you on how to install them and get them up and running. So I will post in the chat the link. And, oops, remove any web addresses. I'm not allowed to post a URL. Moderator, can you allow me to post a URL? I wonder how I can cheat that then. I mean I can't post a URL. Did that come through? Uh, yeah, I, how, how do I send it to the moderator then? Yeah, uh, can, I, yeah uh, uh, well, uh, can you send me an email? I got too much going on. Can you send me an email and I just respond? Uh, Wayne at fxbootcamp.com. I don't even have my email up. So anyways, I'll look for that. I'll send the, I'll send the URL. And if you're watching a recording of this, um, I'll post it in the, um, comment section underneath as well. 
So it's just so something extra I did for non-farm payrolls 150th. See, I just got your um, reminder email. Okay, so. Okay, I'm responding to that, I guess. Hang on, almost done, guys. Running all the software slows my PC down as well. So I think that'll be fine. Where are you guys now? All right. All right. Yeah, we're here. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I sent it to the moderator. Thank you. All right. We'll get we'll get this. We'll we'll try it. We'll get through. All right, so that's that. So I recommend we use Euro, we watch Euro USD today. And I recommend we watch USD CAD or CAD yen. Let me know what you prefer, CAD yen or USD CAD. Thank you, moderator. There's the link. There's the link. Just test it. Yeah, here it is. Just so you see it. Nice and easy. Okay, enough. No. All right, let's move on. Dot com. Uh, yeah, great. Ba 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 ba. So yeah, let me know. CAD yen or uh, or USD CAD. USD CAD CAD yen. No, well, dude. We'll do Aussie and stuff, but look, Canadian jobs report coming out, American jobs report coming out. You see what I mean? So, like, why would I trade Aussie? Okay, so that's all. But we will. But for this scalp, I want to watch something else. Okay. So CAD yen has fallen. I'd like it to fall a little further, actually, and then I'd like to buy it. CAD Swissy's already hit the week, so don't trade CAD Swissy unless CAD is weak. So if Canadian dollar falls, you're probably better off selling USD Swiss franc. Swiss franc's quite weak at the moment. So I don't know. This is kind of a dud. Typically in this situation, you just stop trading. And the counter trend trade didn't even happen. The upside trend isn't sort of, I mean, it's all vulnerable. Okay, let's go to here. Okay. Aussie CAD all the way to the bottom that's the monthly target and it's what the 5th october 5th or something let me double check that yeah it's the fifth of the month we've already hit the monthly projected target so actually i would i would expect to see some aussie cad um bullishness um mostly be of aussie cad bearish profit taking um, there's nothing here to say it will, so you, you don't want to bet that it is. But if you start seeing it creep up, you should expect that it's the beginning of a counter trend trade based on profit taking. Because once again, even a week and a half ago, we were talking about it dropping to 91, 91.50, right? 90, like this target here. So now that we're there, there's nothing more to talk about. There's no more predictions. I mean, you could say it could fall further, but well, it could always fall further. So what we, you know, this 
predicts that that's happened, so that's done. What is next is much, much, much less than uh, predictable. Okay. So we have a few minutes now to NFP. We'll use the FX Street calendar to get the headline number. So I pulled that up. So anyways, thank you again, guys, for attending. Reconnection successful. So hopefully it's reconnected. Uh, I'm waiting here to see what YouTube does. I don't know, but it stopped streaming and then it's streaming again. Yeah, all right, all right good, it's back. A V weapon again? Or no, a deer. All right, so anyways, let's... Uh, I was going to change this, so let's do this, and over here, let's just change this. I guess we're not going to watch the Swissy. I don't want to look at USD CAD right away, because what if they're both weak or both you know strong or something like that, I, because I don't want to combine the two news into one pair. Um, but anyways, let's move this to Euro dollar. Why not? Just pick one. Euro dollar is nice. Sure. Okay. So on the left is CAD yen. Let's do it on a one hour first, and then I'll drop into a one minute. I'll get rid of this. This is from what we did on Monday. On Monday, we assumed price would make its way back down into support. And I identified the key level support being down here. Okay. This is moderate level. This is okay. So this could act as support as well. It's less ideal, but it's about a 50%, all that kind of stuff. But on at least on Monday, we are anticipating a drop, not a rise. Okay. Now that we're here, you plan A might be by it. Plan B might be by it. Plan C might be by it. Okay. Bears, you should already know just basic price action, right? This is your sell zone if you're a bear. Okay. Now, on the other side, we're looking at Euro dollar. Okay. I'm going to move that for now, put it on a one hour just so you can do your basic analysis. And then we'll drop into a one minute a little bit later, right? So you can see uh, how straightforward trading has been. Right, down, 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 new lower low, look left, the old support becomes resistance, that's your new sell zone, right? Down, 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 not quite as good. Down, 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 look left, drag that across, that's your new sell zone. Down, 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 look left, that's your old support, that's your new sell zone. Right, down, 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 down. And um, I, I think it was Wednesday we talked about this new, next new drop because of these pivots, you should probably just be out. That even though if you were just doing naked price action, you would sell this again. Uh, the pivot point says you should probably just take take your money and stop trading. Okay. And now we all wait for NFB. So we got some decent lines in the sand, and we'll update them after the news comes out. And we'll go from there. Okay, let me get my news calendar up.
Wait for it. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, Yen's all over the place. Waiting for the Epic Street calendar. This is all pre volatility. Oh, ho, dollar weakness. Still waiting for the calendar. Every breaking wave. All right, so anyways, the number's out. I don't have it yet on the calendar. Let me uh, get back to the YouTube. Too many windows open for this computer. Okay, there's the first one minute. I'm going to move over to five minutes on these now. Well, I'm just going to refresh the calendar then because I'm still not, it's been a minute and I still don't have the data. Okay, got to be careful in here. So to get the numbers here finally loaded. So 134 is actually a miss. And then looking at Canada, uh, 63. So that's pretty good. Let me zoom in a little bit on the kitty cat yen. Okay. So how are you going to treat that? Up, 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 down, down, down. Very similar to what we talked about. Let me adjust this. So we're already at the line in the sand. This is the moment of truth. Your stop should be at break even. Or wait for it to do the whole cycle again on the five minute chart, which means it'll most likely make a higher high and then come back later.
So we'll see. I think the more conservative way of doing it, of course, is the five minute over the one minute. So we'll see. Euro dollar, oh, excuse me, Euro dollar is all over the place. It was up, it was down, but right now nothing's really changed, right? We're still at 115.000. CAD yen's all over the place. Roger, you're trading the unemployment rate? They're not the headline number? Yeah, Euro even wants to flip now, huh? Pretty rotten Euro. Yeah, so back out. Watch the Euro. It's not loving it. Oops, wrong chart. Wrong chart. Let's back out here and make sure you understand the context of where your trade is, right? So these are all the beautiful, easy little steps. Um, if bears sell it here, it's important to bears, okay? Now, you got some problems here, but we've already tested these waters. A bear is going to want to take it down to here, and there's a, a cluster of a weekly pivot here and a monthly pivot here, okay? So the move that they're considering, like whoever shorted here, is thinking about moving down there and they're probably going to take profit down there as well. Okay. So if you're going to play it that way, by all means, you have, you have the freedom to do that. Okay. Looks like dollars gaining some strength again. It was up, it was down, it was up. Now, you know, the interesting thing is uh, this used to move like 300 pips in a minute, not 30 or 13. Okay. So what do you think? You really need to make a decision on how you're going to act the next two hours. Are you going to continue selling this down to that lower target? Are you going to try to buy this like a dip, maybe? And you're going to trade it that way as a bull? I don't really see it, but, you know, it's a psychological level. But the point I'm making is you make a decision now, and you, you, know, you sell rallies or you buy dips, one or the other. Brooke, but that doesn't matter. Why would that matter, Brooke? You're like, oh, well, it didn't matter at 3.8, but 3.7, I'm going to change my portfolio strategy. It doesn't matter. It's esoteric. It doesn't change anything. It's only important to the people on the news. Right, the Fed's going to not say, you know, the, the, the Fed, the decision makers, they're not sitting there going, oh, well, we need to change everything now that we're at 3.7. Right? Mike says, can that <coughs> mug get bigger? I don't know. I'm drinking two of these. This is the other one. So which one's bigger? Uh, yeah. So apparently, yeah, apparently it can get bigger. <coughs> Okay. All right. So I got some requests to go around the world. We'll do that. By the way, does every does everyone have that link, or does anyone else need the link to the download for my chart set up, my weekly pivot points, my monthly pivot points, the watermark, the moving averages, the oscillators? 
Uh, all these profiles are included. Every profile you see here is included. Perhaps the moderator could post the link again for us. Uh, my, Fred asks, what's my overall bias on the dollar? I would like the dollar to weaken based on improving macroeconomics. If it's a risk-off world, that, that doesn't bode well for macroeconomics, right? And that's when the dollar tends to do well. So I want everyone to do well. I want every country to do well. And in that situation, the dollar weakens. Okay? So that's what I want is a weak dollar. Now, it may not be happening today, but it might happen later or next week or next month. And that's when I get you know, involved, when market conditions match my economic bias. Okay. Yeah, moderator, can you post that link again? No, I haven't emailed it, Ed. Okay, it's the link. There we go. Thank you, moderator. That's the link, guys, that bit.ly link. <clears throat> I'll also post it in the comment section after the webinar is over. Okay. All right. So let's go through the world here. Let's start with Aussie yen. Lots of people wanted Aussie dollar. We can do that as well. So let me zoom in here. Let me drop from a daily chart maybe to an hourly chart. Okay. So what do we have here? If you do use monthly pivots, what this monthly pivot up here predicts is a drop. And now, excuse me, I really have to zoom this in here. Uh, that cell predicts either a bounce where we are now, and that's an inside week, but if you're truly bearish, what you're anticipating now is Aussie yen falls to 78 and a half. However, it doesn't look like a terribly bearish market at the moment, so you're going to have to assume bulls want to buy it here and take it north. Okay? So bulls, if you exist out here in the world today, you're actually in your monthly buy zone. On a weekly basis, this is terrible for bulls and bears. We're, we're, we're in no man's land. Like nothing interesting should be happening at this price area. Okay. So, you know, M0, who cares about M0? So it looks like we're playing the monthly pivot. Okay. So again, monthly bears sell here. At the beginning of the month, right? Monthly bear, sorry, monthly bulls buy here. That's all we know. It's only factual. Okay. <clears throat> it's only factual. That's where bears would sell. This is where bulls will buy. Now we don't know how many bears and how many bulls, right? So bears would be profitable here, but nervous that it's all going to collapse. Um, or bulls are really looking for things like, you know, um, reversal patterns. Samuel, you can just scroll up a little bit in the chat. And the link has been posted a couple of times by the moderator. Okay. Okay. So anyways, that, that's it. So the charts don't tell you whether you should be a bullish or bearish. It just tells you the market conditions and the time frame you're looking for. Okay. So bulls are looking for reversal patterns right now. And if this falls any further, bears are going to be very confident and that it predicts everything. Right. So those are the two things going on. Which one are you? Okay. <clears throat> right. And that might frustrate you if you're new to Forex <clears throat> or new to trading. 
There we go. Um, and you have to put it this way. If you're a professional trader or a professional money manager, people pay you for your opinion. That's what it comes down to. Thank you, moderator. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. And so charts don't have opinions. <clears throat> MACD doesn't have opinion. It's an algorithm. Pivot points don't have an opinion. It's an algorithm. So your clients pay you to do all the research and make all the decisions on their behalf. So when you open this chart, you should already know if you're a bull or a bear. You see what I mean? So if you're a bull, you simply are looking for the places you want to buy. And that will indicate the price, right? Doesn't mean you'll get there. But like, for example, if I'm a bull, price fell down here, it's near that bottom and near the monthly pivot. Yeah, I'd buy it down there. That'd be a plan. Okay. That would be a plan, guys. If I was a bull, I could plan on buying it there. Very similar to this. You take you take this bottom, and you can kind of see that's basically where we are now. So, yeah. So, right now, on Aussie, if I was a bull, I would create trade plans. <clears throat> Gee whiz. Um, anyways, I would buy here or I'd buy there. Plan A, plan B. All right. With that being said, if you know how to trade uh, monthly pivot points or monthly swings, right? What do you mean join an academy? Uh, Ru Ruslan, uh, it uses an external uh, host to ensure that it does. Okay. And no, you don't have to join anything. No. It's completely free. Okay. All right. So anyways, if you know how to swing trade, for example, on a monthly basis, you will know that this pivot point here is important. Not this one, not that one, not this one, not that one, this one. That's the one you would be looking for, for selling. And that's probably why price fell. So we know bears live here. We know bears exist. So plan B now, because plan A was to sell there, plan B for a bear is going to sell this retracement if the bears get it, right? They're still going to sell and they're going to go this way. So... There are bears in this market. We know that for a fact as they sold this. What we don't know is how many bulls are left and what kind of challenge the bears are going to give bulls. But I can tell you the next trade plan if you're a bear is to sell this retracement down, and we already know the target. All right, Gary, well, just, just wait. It's all automated, so just wait. Yeah, Peter, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, I apologize. I've only slept four hours, by the way. So. Thank you, Tucker. Yeah. Tucker says it was all down. Great. Worked just fine for Tucker. So it works, guys. Confirmed. Cool. All right. Well, just wait. All right, so that's that. Let's do pound dollar now. Okay. So you probably already know if you're a bull or a bear on this. Okay. On a monthly basis, if you're a bull, you want to buy somewhere in here. That's your monthly plan. Okay, it's not your weekly plan, it's not your daily plan, it's not your NFP scalp. But if you're a bull, on pound dollar, you want to sell it and you want to take it up here. Okay. The swing trading group already front ran this sell at the end of September. Okay, 
But so what's left now is maybe bulls have bought this and take it up there. Bears, where are bears living? They're going to try it again here. All right. So let's put it in context. Bears are thinking this, right? They sold it down to there. They're going to take it back up here or allow it to go head up there and head down to there. Do we know if that's going to work? No, we don't know if that's going to work. We only know what that plan is. And that is a very, very, very likely plan. Okay? But some people will disagree and say it's not bearish, it's bullish. And, you know, bulls couldn't buy here, it was too high, and they couldn't buy here, it was too high. So, anyways, based on monthly swing pivot point strategy, this is a buy zone. So, if they've been buying this, like let's say a double bottom or a higher high or one, two, three, or whatever is made bullish, then their target is up here. Okay? Now, from that, Right. You, you know where the bulls and bears are. I don't know if you're a bull or a bear, but you should know where both bulls and bears are. OK. So now the next thing is you have to fold in weekly trade plans. All right. So now this is why you need uh, weekly pivot points. Because on a smaller basis, you're going to have the higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And currently, next week's predicted high is 132. Okay. That's the predicted high for next week. Now, Joe, let's try it on Sunday, okay? Okay. Euro dollar. Sure. So I'm going to add the template back, the, the standard template that I like. Uh, Manuel Dam says the download link will try to get you into trading classes. Well, I do offer that. You won't be able to download any indicator. No, that's not true, Manuel. So, yeah, it's all there. Click on the box next to the Harvard University line operator. What? Now you click the giant download indicator button. Anyways. What time? I don't know, Jim. Sorry. I suppose when the market opens, right? So f five ish, six ish. Cool. So euro dollar. I thought we did this before the news, but um, all right, let's go back into this. Okay. We're caught on a monthly support pivot and we hit our weekly target. Okay. So a lot of people are going to be done for the week. <clears throat> okay. Our job now is if you're bared to look for new levels of resistance if you want to try. But again, what I have to emphasize, maybe you're missing it. This here on Wednesday tells me to stop trading euro dollar. So it's a big question now, should you even trade euro dollar today? And you'll say, oh, well, there's non-farm payrolls. But at the end of the day, who cares about that? But more importantly, what if you're a bear? What if you're just a bear? What if you sold last week and all this week you're a bear? How do you get back into your trade if you take profit there? Right? That's really kind of the question. The first opportunity, which I call plan A, would be to sell something like this. Okay. Unfortunately, the target's not that far away. That's right, Michael. The thing that says 
May I make a suggestion? Would be a suggestion, yeah. I would agree with Michael. Michael Arnold says, question, Wayne, swing trading is often against the trend or only with the major trend? Uh, well, mostly, okay, There's mo it's mostly trend trading. There are two situations in which I teach um, a counter trend trade, but they don't happen that often. So it, it's more of a, a trend trading system. So typically, if I'm setting up a weekly swing, we're trying to make, you know, 100, 150 pips. Okay, if we're doing monthly swings, we're trying to make more like 300 pips. Okay. All right. So in my, my current swing trading group, there's, I don't know, 10 or 12 of us. One person already has 2,000 pips for the month or for the month of September, you got 2,000 pips. Someone else got like a, a over a thousand, a couple people got over a thousand and everyone else is sort of in between. They made 500 pips one week and then 200 pips another week, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can see that, you know, you need to stay in the trade a little bit longer and that's what swings are. So to stay in the trade longer, you're going to need a trend. Hopefully that makes sense. Cool. So that's Euro dollar. Yeah, we email it to you. And if you don't get it, I will talk to the programmers, we'll review why not, and I'll have them manually send it to you. I just can't do it in the middle of a webinar. Okay, guys? Okay, now, let me know if you got, um, let me know if you have questions or want me to cover a different um, currency. I think what we should do is gold and oil. No, we'll do that right now, in fact, Roger. Just got all this stuff in the way. Right that in the way. All right. Just trying to clear all this stuff. All right, everybody. Hey, this is Wayne McDonald with FX Bootcamp. Whoa, this whoa, whoa, whoa. Video. Now I hear how to a video going on. Hang on. Something's time. freaking out. Hang on. There's an Where would this be? That's There's, not there. Um, pivot points. There's I can hear something. Templates. There's profile templates. There we go. How about that. All right, let's get back to the world. Okay, see, Michael got the files. Great. All right, so let's go back in here. Aussie, a lot of people ask for Aussie, right? So you know I did Aussie before the news came out, right? Right on, Lionel. All right, so now we're in here. This is what we did uh, earlier. So if you go back to last week, we had a buy here and a buy at this X. It's a counter trend trade, but gold was moving sideways in general, and we were playing this like a double bottom, okay? And, and the reason it was being played as a double bottom is I really just see gold moving sideways. So it kind of gets overbought, then it kind of gets oversold, then it, kind of, it just kind of does nothing, right? So really I'm neutral, but th these are things to set up. So on Monday, we had a setup here to buy the roll reversal. This is the one, two, three reversal pattern on the monthly swing. Okay, the monthly swing predicts actually a breakout to the upside. I just don't believe it at the moment, okay? 
I'm pessimistic, I guess. Now let me get gold out of the way. Okay. But based on this pivot point, guys, based on this pivot, it tells me that gold is supposed to go to 1218, 1219. Okay. So this is what we did on Monday. So by Wednesday, we were up here. Thursday, it dropped. And now we're wondering if this is the, you know, just a wave sort of thing like that and now we move to this right so this was a buy last friday this was a buy on monday this was a buy on thursday and maybe now with nfp out of the way it makes its way to the upside if you're a bull okay now if you do not buy into that if you're not a bull here's the interesting thing you don't believe the bulls have guts. You're a bear, right? So you're like, these bulls don't have the guts to make it a higher high. So what you're doing is probably combining this level with this level. And you're saying, well, what it's going to do with uh, after NFP is it's going to head up here. And then it's going to collapse working its way down. Okay. Now, if you're going to front run, you don't even think it's going to make it that high. So... I think you're thinking more like, what is that, uh, 1206, right, 1206, and then you're going to take it downtown. Probably, well, I'd say normally here, but we need to stay in the range if you believe we're in a range, right? So that's how I'd see it. Uh, I'd prefer to be a bull, but I don't care. Howard Jackson got him right on. Jim's got the files right on. Luis Garcia says they work. Cool. And by the way, there's a video on, on how to install the EAs and the indicators and all that kind of stuff. Should be very easy. You should be up and running um, quickly. Uh, Simon sold. What? What? what you said what? Uh, you'd like to see? Oh, 1120 for gold. Oh, well. So here's the funny thing, and it's a language issue. You say you would like to see. I don't think that way. All right. I don't have an opinion. I only trade, right? Um, so 11, 20. Well, there's a lot of things that need to happen before we even think of 11, 20. A nice example of that would be like a trend would be nice. So we don't even have a trend, and you're talking about 11, 20, and we're at 12, 04. Like, why is it going to drop 80 bucks? I'm not saying it's not going to drop 20 bucks. But when you're like, I would like it, that's like a wish. Like, dear Santa Claus, please make gold drop 80 bucks. I don't think that way. So I say, if if I was thinking that way, okay, let, let me change it. If I was a bear thinking that way, um, I would say, I want to sell at resistance. Okay? So where's resistance? And I'd say, well, this looks pretty good. Plus, I'm going to try to get in next week's weekly swing and try to fold that into like we already made a monthly swing. So, yeah, I would be selling this around 12.05, 12.06. We're at 12.04. And take it down this week to support. Okay? But support's only 11.82. So we're like still 60 pips away, right? Well, from then, if I'm going to get this right, and, I, and we're going to drive that down to 1180, let me go to a four-hour chart, then we're going to need to break out of this stupid range that we're in, right? And then retrace a bit, and then sell it and get down to here, and then break that. So now we're talking like if it happens, it's not going to happen in October, okay? Okay. So if you're trying to get, Simon says, I want to get down to 1120. Well, first of all, we're not in market conditions for that to happen yet. So I don't know why you want it to go down, but we're not there yet. But we're approaching a resistance zone in which it could be born. Because if it sells off the top of the resistance like it's done about eight or nine times this year or since August, right, then maybe it starts to collapse to the downside. You need that to even start the process of hoping for 1120. But then I look at my charts, I'm like, okay, well, once again, my predicted low around 1170 and 1160 is a double bottom. I'm like, my gosh, 
For you to get to 1120, we have to break that double bottom. And my technical analysis tells me, even if it's true, even if it happens, it's not going to happen in October, Simon. It's not going to happen in October. It might happen in November. Right? But my technical analysis, it's not my opinion. The analysis of the chart and time continuum, right? The, the price time continuum. I look at the chart and I say, well, you might be right, Simon. I don't really know. I don't see it yet. But if you are right, it's not happening in October. Factual. Pretty clear about these things, right? But you got to be clear. You got to have intent. You got to understand what's happening here, right? Hope's not a strategy. So I don't know why you want it to go down to 1120. It very well could happen, all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure why, you, how you got to that conclusion or that hope. Doesn't even matter to me. But I can say to you, oh, well, you might be right, but not in October. Uh, Smeh says you can't open a zip file. Uh, zip files are opened by Windows. Okay. Now, Windows will allow you to open it. I also um, use 7-zip. You could use, what's it called, zip, zip files. Um, okay, there's uh, Google. Use Google, dude, and say, how do I unzip a file? And Windows will do it for you, so it's not like you have to buy something. It's just zipped. It's compressed, right? And then you got it. Boom, boom, ba boom. Okay. Ad blocker. That's weird. Well, there's no ads attached to the download, so there you go. Uh, manual, no, if you can't figure it out, I'm not interested. Sorry, bro. You simply click. If you want to buy a, uh, uh, you know, I say, hey, man, would you like to take a seminar? And you're like, no. Would you like a free consultation? Do you want to meet with someone to help you? And you're like, no, don't worry about it. And then you're done with the file. I mean, if the emails are not being sent out properly, lots of people are getting them, but maybe there's a, a bug in the system where some of the emails are not going out. I'll investigate that and I'll send it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's say if the system isn't sending out some of the emails, I'll fix it and I'll have it sent it out. I just can't do it in the webinar, guys. You've got it. All right, Manuel, if I was the moderator, I would ban you. Um, you're not contributing to the conversation. All right, so let's do WTI now. So, you see I have a lot of analysis on here already. Let me just go through some of the basics so you understand my method of trading. And you might like it if you've never seen it. I've got a lot of things I need to clean up here, though. Let's delete that one. Let's delete that one. Let's delete this one. And by the way, if I sound cranky, I apologize. I've only slept three hours. I'm jacked up on coffee and energy drinks. Uh, I'm giving you 110% of my energy uh, on a three-hour webinar for free. You know, so I'm just trying my best. I, I apologize if I'm cranky. All right, just I'm sure you can figure out how to download. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out how to unzip a folder. Um, there's nothing complicated going on. And I'm here to teach you how to trade. So I'm going to focus on that as much as possible, not get distracted by this, okay? But again, 
I apologize if I was bitchy. All right, so let's go over basics. Like in this case, we're looking at uh, oil. Come on, there we go. Okay, uh, let, let me get it on here. And, oops, and one more. All right, so the basis of this, like th there's it, the fact that this oil, it, it does make it, it's not special, right? Because of its oil. Um, what I'm doing here is price action. Okay. Robert says, does it work in MT5? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. Up, 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 down, down. This is old support. It's also a weekly swing trade. Okay. So once again, if you don't know how to swing trade, you've now identified something you don't know. All right. All right, thank you, moderator. I just don't, you know, I, I just, I want this to be good, okay? All right, so anyways, this is just a basic we, uh, weekly swing trade, okay? Up, 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 right? Comes down, look it. This is just a weekly swing trade. Now you're like, well, wait, what do you mean just a weekly swing trade? This is the buy zone. Not here, not here, not up here. Here, based on just, Swing trading and, and my pivot points. Okay. Then we make yet another high, which is actually the target. We're done early in the week, right? It retraces back down, which it should because of profit taking. Ah, you know what? It's the stupid charts again, right? Sorry. Let's do it here. Sorry. There's such a lag that I make the mistake and then you don't up and it takes you up. 30 seconds to a minute to update me. And so anyways, I apologize again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Up, 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 down, down. Buy at the weekly swing. Up, 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 down, down. Buy at the weekly swing. And, and you know, just to point something out, you see, it's an exact entry buy. And the target is actually here. We hit it in the last hour. Then the new trade, right? And look, we hit the target in the last hour. Great. Okay. But this one is less of, um, of a weekly swing. This is a price action trade. Old resistance became support. Take it up here. Okay. Then it's come down. So normally what you do is you kind of look left. You'd expect somewhere in there would be the new buy zone. It's not quite there. Makes its way up. And now we've hit the monthly target. So this down arrow I drew four days ago. And it's suggesting now that we've hit our target. Right? Now that we've hit our target. Our target was like, I don't know, a couple of pennies above. It was 77. Um we should be done. There should be profit taking here. Right? Thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, someone asked, why did the um, euro decrease, euro dollar decrease after NFP? I imagine because the number wasn't that good. Okay. So anyways, that's where we are now. If you are a believer of that this is more than just profit taking, but you, you think there's actually a change, then you need to start using price action to sell this on the way down, plus next week's pivots. So really what I would like to do is almost set this up like a head and shoulders. I think this would be perfect if we got this for next week. That'd be sweet. Thank you, Steve. Steve says he learned a lot about the swing trading course. I love swing trading because it's a form of trend trading and I'm a trend trader. So if, if I were to do one strategy only, it would be swing trading. And right. What I need, how about this? Let's do it differently. What I need to trade successfully. How about that? Uh, let's, 
kill the moving averages. So I can do this way, indicator. Delete. 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 So they're helpful. I don't need them. All right. Uh, I would like this. This is what I would like. I'd like to know the support and resistance of the market based on the market, right? I'd like to know the support and resistance of price. And everything else is just a luxury. I don't need anything else. Okay, so let's put this into some sort of context. Under market, under current market conditions, if I'm a seller, I'm going to sell in these gray boxes. And if I'm a buyer, I'm going to buy in these gray boxes. Now, it looks more bearish than bullish. So I guess, you know what, I could probably squeeze that into there, into a reasonable trade setup. Um, actually, you know what's happening is we're, we're getting in next week's swing trade. So if I can get this. There we go. Um, reconnected. Hopefully I don't lose you. So it says it's reconnected, so we'll go here. Okay. Now the flip side of this is what if you're a bull? Well, then let it make the high, let it drop, and then buy it. Okay. Buy it here. Same price. I don't care about the price per se. Buy the dip. If you like this as a up, buy down here, up, buy down here, rinse and repeat, okay? So the two things that I believe, in the bottom of my heart, you have to master to get any level of profitability is price action and pivot points. You can take everything else, fold it in, and it's very, very helpful, makes you a better trader, but I have to have this stuff. The next thing is you really need to learn fundamental analysis. If you don't know CPI from PCE from GDP, um, you are missing valuable, 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 valuable information because it tells you knowing this stuff leads you towards central banking policy. So once you are studying central banking policy and you're learning things like the fractional reserve banking system and the money multiplier and in supply and demand of um, of the money supply, you have to say, well, why would the Fed increase the money supply? Why would the Fed decrease the money supply? What's the discount window? What's the prime rate? What's the Fed funds rate? Right? You need to know all these things. And then why the Fed would make these adjustments. And then, of course, what information they use to decide whether they should make an adjustment. You know, like, for example, what is an OMO, right? What's an open market operation? And when the Fed goes in to buy bonds, first of all, why would they go in to buy bonds or sell bonds? And how many do they need based on the fractional reserve in, and the money multiplier, right? Like, my God, you need to know this stuff, right? That's fundamental analysis because, like, the RBA will come out and they'll say, you know what? Aussie's overvalued. We, it's... It's worth, seven, you know, it's 75 now. We think it's worth 65. The RBA says stuff like that. They will tell you, we want the Aussie to lose 1,000 pips. Oh, my gosh. And guess what happens? It loses 1,000 pips. So you, you need to, you know, visit the RBA website, review their reports, uh, read the transcripts from their speeches, and they'll tell you exactly what they're, they want to do and why they want to do it. So you do need to know inflation data and import-export data and all that kind of stuff because that's important. And from there, you can discern a bias. Oh, I want to sell Aussie or I want to buy Aussie, whatever your decision is. But based on fact, and you'll be shocked once you know economics, how simple and straightforward that is. So now that you're a bull, let's say, on Aussie dollar, now it gets much easier because now you can go to your Aussie dollar chart and you already know you're a bull. You haven't even opened it up. You're like, man, I want to buy a bull. Uh, I want to buy this. So you start looking for the proper prices in which you would consider buying. 
So like at one point I had a plan A, right? And then the next week my plan A was by here or by here. And now we're down here, like maybe it's not a good market condition to buy. Good. Wait for the market conditions to improve and then start buying dips. So like if we're like this by Wednesday of next week, maybe you take a shot long, man, and get in the game. Or what if it does this? Well, then buy that dip, okay? But the thing is, you're not looking at your charts going, oh, I wonder what I should do. Oh, look at the MACD. The MACD told me to sell. Or, oh, my gosh, look at that giant green candle. I guess I'm supposed to buy now. That's not what professionals do, okay? So that's where I'm getting you to. Learn pivot points and learn price action. And from that, you can put a strategy into it, like swing trading. Great. So now you can do something technically and make money. Great. Then once you're making money, you really should learn fundamentals so that you can understand central banks because central banks tell you what they're going to do. The thing is, if you don't speak the language of economics or sorry, macroeconomics, then you wouldn't understand a report. When they give you a report, it's really clear to me. They're like, hey, we're not going to raise interest rates. and we'll, we'll tell you three reasons why. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, good, done. Some of these reports take me. I don't know, four minutes to read, and I'm like, good, I'm updated. The RBA just told me what they want to do with the value of the Aussie dollar and why. But if you don't understand economics, then it, it might as well be Greek or gobbledygook. So at some point, you're going to need to speak the language of supply and demand and scarcity, right? So when I say, well, the Fed's trying to decrease the money supply, you're like, well, what does that mean? Or then you say to me, oh, I don't like the Fed because they print money. And I start laughing because I'm like, the Fed doesn't print money, the Treasury. So you don't like the Fed, but you don't even understand what it does. So now I don't care, I don't care about your opinion because you don't know what you're talking about. I want you to know what you're talking about so we can discuss your opinion. I may disagree with you. You may disagree with me but we would have sound logic and reasoning and we could debate and we could have an interesting conversation. That's where I want you to get. Okay. No, you don't need a university degree. So I'm in school right now getting my degree in economics. It's a little school. Not many people go there. Uh, you might have heard of it. Oh, look at this. Okay. Right? It's just a little private school. Um, but no, you don't. I taught myself uh, fundamental analysis um, uh, and, and economics and stuff. Uh, I taught myself. Uh, someone asked about where you can, yeah, you can go to fxbootcamp.com. Okay. All right. So let's get back. Sorry if I got distracted there. Let's go over the yen pairs. Yeah, yeah, Steve, you could totally do that. I mean, you got to be a little bit smart, right? You got to be a little bit smart, um, but you don't have to be uh, wicked smart, as they say in Boston. Um, uh, you know what I think is way more important? I want you to be an extreme hard worker. I want you to have a ridiculous, sickening work ethic. Right? That's what you need. Uh, Michael, I thought I answered that already, probably because the number was a miss. Do you read the annual reports published by central banks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I also like the IMF. I like the World Bank. I like OPEC. I like the EIA, the IEA. Um, uh, the realtor industry does a good one. Um, I mean, yeah, everything, bro.
Okay. Does your card get you out of jail for free? You know, uh, I did a, uh, I did a speech in New York City, I don't know, 2008 or something. Uh, I taught people uh, how to use the TED spread, how to use the yield curve, and how to use the VIX. Okay? And after, you know, there were so many people in this presentation, by the way, the fire marshal had to kick people out of the room because there were people in the room and all around the edges and stacked and stacked outside and there's like a hundred people looking through the door and the fire marshal had to come in and kick people out uh, because we're double the capacity. Uh, so anyways, I did this thing and typically when I leave, there's this horde of people. You guys have seen stuff like that. And, uh, and one guy waits to the very, very end and he comes up to me and he's like, I'm a police officer from upstate, not New York City, upstate. He says, like, if you ever in uh, wherever, right, if you ever get pulled over, give them this card. It's my business card. They'll take care of you. <laughs> right? And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And then, you know, and this guy had been waiting like 45 minutes to tell me this. And then all of a sudden some other guy, and here's the downside of speaking publicly, this other guy comes running up and he's sweating profusely. And he's running up and he comes right up to me. He's like, you're still here. You're still here. Uh, uh, yeah, bro. He's like, I bought you a cheesecake. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I had to run all the way to the deli. It was like 20 blocks. But I went down there and I bought this cheesecake and it's here. And he's all covered in sweat. And he's like, and it's for you. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> no, it was good. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> you got to be careful when you speak publicly. Okay, cool. So where are we? Are? Uh, where are we? Uh, USD yen. Let's do this. Okay, once again, I just have to continue with this because this is what I, I was teaching uh, uh, Traders Way clients. By the way, I meet with Traders Way clients every single day. If you're a client, just go to, F or go to uh, tradersway.com, oh, right? Open a trading account. In your back office, there's a button that says live webinars. Every morning, 7.30 in the morning, free for clients. You click on the button, you're in like Flint, all right? So it's maybe another re reason to visit tradersway.com and open an account. But anyways, this is what we did a couple of days ago. Listen to this. Up, 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 up. New high, high. Look left. Drag it across. The old resistance becomes support. New high, high. Look left. Drag it across. Old resistance becomes support. New high, high. Look left. Drag it across. The old resistance becomes future support. This is where you buy. New higher high, look left, old resistance becomes support. Higher high, dip, right? Higher high, dip, higher high, dip, higher high. And this is moving all the stops. Okay, all the stops to here. Now, the conversation we had two days ago was if someone wanted to know when to get out. You get out at this circle. Okay, because you risk the total collapse and we measured it and I said, you know, you're going to give up something like 600 pips if you wait. So why don't you just if you know there's going to be a retracement just on profit taking, like I'm not saying it's reversing, but, you know, because that's where they prop take profit. So you can anticipate profit taking. So if you can anticipate it, you can just take a profit, too. If you got eight open trades, the risk is really built up. And sure enough, we went from here to here and now down to here. And you can see it was the right thing. Because at one point, uh, I think it was Wednesday, I actually moved all the stops like this. The, the, these were representing stops from all those earlier um, trades, right? And so you, you're out. You should be out. You should have been out. Should have been out on Wednesday. Okay, but going back to this, this is just price action. All right, listen to me. Up, 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 up. 
down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Right? And then up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 take profit. Okay. Now another side of this is this is a, a, a pivot, a, a swing entry. This is a swing entry. This is a swing entry. Okay. This is not a swing entry. It tells you we're out of position. So it tells you to get ready to take profit. All of that information is on this chart. You, you simply need to know how to swing trade. Okay. You sold gold, you know, so uh, uh, what Kar Asim says, I sold gold two days ago, um, and he's losing a lot of money. I looked at gold two days ago, and it wasn't worth trading. So uh, I, I read the market as neutral, so I'm not, not that interested. Okay. Michael Arnold says, do you have a video of that meeting? No, um, that was the Traders Expo in New York, I'm guessing 2007 or 2008. I remember it because it was right after the, the crisis. And my point was to tell people how their stupid, lazy um, MBA uh, money managers did nothing, did them a disservice charge them 2% of their net worth and totally ripped them off by not actually managing their money. So even though the crisis occurred, their money managers called them and say, oh, it's just market timing. Oh, it's just short-term volatility. Oh, we have a long-term strategy. Oh, just ride it out. Just ride out the storm. Just, uh, just don't do nothing. Please don't re take your money out because I won't get paid is what they should have said, right? So I... I I did a lot of interviews where I was really upset about this. Like people lost 40 and 50% of their net worth and their money managers told them, just write it out. Just write it out. I'm like, well, why do I pay a money manager if they're going to write it out? Why don't you hedge me? Why don't you sell an option? Why don't you sell some futures? Why don't you short sell something? Why don't you hedge me? Like do something. No, oh, that's market time. You should just write it out. There's no way you can know this is happening. Nobody could predict this financial crisis. That's what, that's the nonsense people were told. So anyway, so I walked into New York City. This was just maybe a year into the financial crisis. And I explained in less than an hour with facts, probably a 12 year old would understand that how easy it was predictable that it was coming and that it was happening and that's something you need to be done either get out of the market or start hedging like crazy and so when i finished it like i think some people were crying uh it was one of these things the webinar was over or the the presentation was over there was like three four hundred people in the room and people were like because i just told them how easy it was to understand the risk that was coming and that something needed to be done. And they're like, I just lost 50% of my net worth. I'm going to have to work another 15 years because my money manager didn't do anything to protect me. It like people were crying. <laughs> people brought me cheesecake because it, I mean, like if, oh, I was so mad during that time. I was so mad. Like, so like when I was running FX bootcamp for the time, I spent a year and a half going over all the analysis, like Ted spread and VIX and yield curve, like yield curve is an obvious one, right? Like stupid, obvious. But for a year and a half, we talked about it every single day, but the market kept going up. The market kept going up. So we just still talked about it. Well, it's risk. And then, then the, the yield curve inverted. And I'm like, all right, well, we have six to nine months in which to get out. Like very specific stuff, guys. We have six to nine months to get out. So we talked about that every day. The market kept going up. The market kept going up. So about, 
I don't know, four and a half, five months into the six, uh, six to nine month period, I read a report where most new sales of homes, or I'm sorry, most existing home sales in that month were to people who already owned at least one house. These were flippers. So people were buying houses, but they already owned three or four houses. And they were leveraged 100% mortgages, right? No money down, buying a $2 million house. They have no income. They don't even have a job, but somehow they're getting all this, right? So anyways, I came back to the boot campers and I said, you know what? This is it. I'm out. So I put my house on the market, sold it. Sold everything else we could. My wife just had our second baby. We had a 14-month-old toddler just learning how to stand next to a couch and the other one nursing on my wife's breast and I say honey it's time to pack up we are moving to the other side of the United States away from your friends and away from your family we need to move now the market is about to crash we sold our house like I don't know same day it went on the market we had eight offers um I think three of them were above asking. One was cash, 30-day closing. So I'm like, we're going with the 30-day closing. Took the cash, sold the house, gave him the keys, jumped in a plane, flew to Atlanta, bought a house. My wife didn't even see it. Bought a house, right? Flew back to Atlanta. The, the movers came in, took whatever furniture I just didn't throw over the fence, right? We moved to Georgia, and I get there. We're in Georgia now, and the, the market starts to crash. Right. Then the Fed raises in, or lowers interest rates for the first time. The next day, I refinance the house because I timed the closing of our new house to the day of the after the Fed meeting because I knew on the Fed on the Fed day the Fed would raise in, or lower interest rates for the first time in like a hundred years. They would actually lower interest rates right since like 1990. And I timed the new mortgage to close on the day so I'd actually get the, the better mortgage. Predicted it to the day. So when I teach people that now, like, look, it's just fundamental analysis. It's easy. A child could do this. I don't know why your MBA money manager can't do it. But so when I explain this to a group of, of New Yorkers, they just went, holy moly. Because they might have lost a million dollars because they didn't see it coming. So, and, and I am not a genius. It's just look at the facts. It was so obvious, right? It was so obvious when I showed the audience, they were dumbfounded, just shocked. Like if they had only known, like and it's an inverted yield curve. Look, it takes one second. Wow, the yield curve's inverted. Not the like, they kind of talk about it now, but it's a manipulated yield curve and it doesn't mean nearly as much. But a free floating yield curve, and it, put it this way it costs more money. Like, what, think of a market like this it can cost you significantly more money to borrow money, right? Like to get a loan, a 30 day loan. Let's put it this way it costs you more as an interest rate, it costs you more to get a 30 day loan loan than a 30 year loan. Does that sound strange to you? You need to borrow money for 30 days. It costs you 6%, but you can borrow money for 30 years and get five and a half percent. You're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I know, right? So now think of it as a business. You, you need to borrow money from banks to buy things like inventory, right? It's normal. You need inventory, right? So you borrow money for inventory. What if your business is running on a, a, a 5% um, um, profit margin because it's a competitive market? You're selling shoes or something. So once you add in your employees and your rent um, and uh, insurance and all this kind of stuff, right, plus the cost of goods sold, right, which is going to be, you know, more like marketing and inventory and all that kind of stuff. You add all that up and you only have a 5% more uh, uh, profit margin. But then what happens if it costs you 6% to borrow the money to buy the inventory? That's what happens, guys. You see? 
Now, what are you going to do as a short shoe store? Just like, oh, well, look at interest rates. The short term interest rates are too high. I'm just going to shut the doors. No, you, you got sales. That's the problem. You're making sales. Cash is coming in, but you're actually losing money along the way, right? So you're not profitable, but you still have a, a, a pile of cash, right? But what happens is you're no longer profitable. You're in business. You got good sales, but now it costs you more to buy your inventory than you're making once you take all your other costs because you have to pay your employees a lot of money and all this kind of stuff, right? So then this starts to get reported on quarterly reports, right? Analyst meetings. You know the quarterly reports that because you're a publicly traded company? And now people are like, you know, CNBC is now talking about it like, wow, same store sales are up at pay less shoe source, right? Same store sales are up, but profits are down. So that's one quarter. So the stock takes a little bit of a hit. Three months later, they come out, same store sales are still up, but now they still are not making money. They're not profitable. For six months in a row, they're not profitable. The stock starts to fall. But what if it's every business in the economy because interest rates are too high, the cost of borrowing money is too high, but inflation's high. So you... Your rent costs too much, your employees cost too much, your insurance costs too much, you, you, know, you cost too much, and then the gasoline to put in your car costs too much, and the, your health care costs too much, and your babysitter costs too much, and oh my God, you're, right? And the whole thing crashes. It's not complicated. That's basic business. You, you know, my kids are 12 years old, and they're learning thermodynamics. This is elementary, right? Something you can explain. I'll show you the yield curve. This is a normal one. This is a bad one. This is why it takes six to nine months to crash because once Wall Street figures it out, they're going to get out of the stock. And once that stock crashes and the other ones start crashing, all of a sudden everyone starts getting out except the dumb money that needs a money manager to tell them, hey, the inverted yield curve should get you out of the market. But he doesn't want to get you out of the market because then he loses his personal income because he's charging you 2% of, of your net worth. You see what I mean? Like someone should have been taking care of you. Even better, you should have been taking care of yourself and making money at the time. So I moved to Georgia and I built a golf course in my backyard and I called it the pound yen. No joke, it's only two golf, it was only two holes. But that one was pound, that one was yen, because it was awesome. To give you another example of that, in 2007, I was at the FX Street uh, sem uh, uh, workshop in, um, what was it called, ITC 2007 in, in Barcelona, Spain. And I did a panel discussion at the end, and people were asking, you know, hey, give us a prediction. What, what can we trade? The market seems like it's going to crash. I predicted almost to the day a 7,500 pip drop in the pound yen. And I explained why around that period, why the pound yen would crash, and not just crash, but crash hard, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pips. And I explained it had to do with people getting out of the stock market and buying 30-day um, notes. And I explained, we know the largest purchases of 30-year debt have just occurred. The largest purchase of, sorry, did I say 30-year? The largest purchase of 30-day paper occurred just, I think, a month before the, uh, the FX Street conference in, in Spain. So I explained to the conference, right? I said, all right. We know it's a fact. It was reported. It's it's done by the CFTC. They let this report out, and it showed more people bought this 30-day debt or, uh, than ever in the history, ever, ever, ever. Obviously, the stock market's getting ready to crash. So I said, look, there's going to be a point when it matures. Do you understand? This debt paper, this bond, if you want to call it a bond, will mature they will get their cash back. They have a decision. Take all that cash and plow it back into the stock market. And if they do, the stock market's going to explode to the upside. 
So, you know, we would have been left with a huge drop, a 30, 40% drop, and then this huge rally, whatever. But I said, if the market is still frightening to professional investors, they're simply going to take that money they've already put into debt, which is a safe haven. If it, the market's still bad, they're just going to take that and they're going to buy another one and then another one and another one. So I said, we could kind of guess and figure out which week or two this, this cycle will come back where these decision makers have to make decisions. They either buy the stock market back or they buy the bond market because the world is crashing. And I said, if they buy it back, you'll see it in the pound yen dropping. And if it drops, it means, and by the way, this is 2007. If it drops on this week or the next week, the pound yen, it's not going to drop 400 pips or 500 pips or 700 pips or 1,000 pips or 2,000 pips or 3,000 pips. It's going to drop five or six or 7,000 pips. Now, I might be wrong. I might have only said five. I can't remember. It's 2007. It was 11 years ago. Go back. FX Street has it on video. But I explained why to the day the logic. All this money is tied up in the bond market on this particular week or two, this small little period of time. They're either going to buy those more bonds or they're going to put it into the stock market. You're going to see the reaction in the pound yen. So if the yen, pound yen falls, dump it and sit on it for 5,000 pips. You know what? Thinking about it now, I think I said 5,000 pips, but I think it fell 7,000. So I'm like, sorry. I was too conservative. I apologize. But the, the logic, you know, the point here is it's not that I'm right. It's that you can know this too. It's, it's not a crystal ball. It's not magic. I'm, not a, I'm more of an idiot than I am a savant. Okay? So this is something like if you just know fundamentals, then you, you know how to put this stuff together. Because what we do is cause and effect. What we do is more related to business can, being conducted around the world than a hedge fund manager. A hedge fund manager dropping a billion dollars on euro dollar, who cares? Doesn't matter. He's a blip. Nothing. That's not what's important. Okay. What's important is whether Australia comes back online. Well, how's that going to happen? Well, China needs to come back online. Well, how do you get China back online? Europe needs to get back online. And how do you get Europe back online? I don't know. Too many socialist pig dogs in Europe. I don't know what it is. But this is what needs to happen. So this is one reason why um, the U.S. is the only game in town. Right? So we talk about this stuff every day. Uh, go to Trader's Way and open an account up. We, we, you can trade with me on Monday if you want. I meet with Trader's Way clients every day. So I'm getting too stretched out here. We went too big. We went too big on that one. I'm sorry. Okay. And by the way, Jimbo says Wayne Soros. Well, I sat on a board with George Soros in uh, 1995. <laughs> yeah. In 1995, I sat on the board of directors in New York City with George Soros and the vice president of Arthur Anderson, and vice president, president of General Electric, a representative of the United Nations. Yeah. That's what I did back in 1995. Cool, right? All right. How do we get it here? Whew. I'm lost. All right. What currency? Uh, there's a bit of a lag, so it's hard for me to ask what currency page. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Kiwi. So we started the month of October. So five days ago, there were two plans, right? Plan A was to sell here, right? The gray line. The, the, the orange lines are simply telling you where you can consider taking profit. So the idea was sell up here at resistance, right? Not a shocker. Be careful here because this is where bulls might live. And if they don't live there, you probably got the, you know, you're probably on the free and clear plan to head down to 
look way down there way down there and we're talking down here okay Ball in your pants? No. No, the reason I don't, John, is so many people use them improperly because they were taught by people that have no idea what they're talking about um, that I just don't really cover them anymore because it, it's too confusing. I'd rather you just stop using them. Okay. Because they're just so horribly misused. Like, you can see it in John Bollinger, his eyes, you know, he's like, I mean, I swear, he says things like, I never said that. I never said that. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's a victim. Bollinger bands are a victim of being hijacked by people. So, Yeah. Yeah, right, Michael. That's good, right? Yeah, Osman wants a new prediction. Well, who says now is a good time for a prediction? All right, so like, um, ba, 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 ba. okay, we had it coming down here, then rising up here, and then falling there. Yeah, let's do it like Monday, John. Why don't you ask me on Monday at the Trader's Way webinar? And uh, I'll be happy to, to, to go over Bollinger Bands with you and, you know, answer your questions and stuff. I'm happy to do that. I just don't make a big deal out of it. I don't really use them anymore. I, I can see. I have enough, but I'm sure I'm happy to cover them with you. All right. Good night, Robert. Sleep tight. Enjoy your weekend. Okay, yeah, cool. So I'm just going to go through random charts. I'm going to look up at the chat every so often. And if you have something um, you'd like me to cover, just let me know. Can you please why some boxes are covered pink? And yeah, those are pivot points. Those are targets. Okay, so Mark downloaded them. Okay, cool. So, for example, you might want to take the swing trading course, Mark, which is part of that all course bundle if you're going to take advantage of, of that. But those are targets. Okay. Green means up, red means down. So it's not that red is a place to sell. A red is where risk increases for bulls. So whoever bought should start taking profit there. So uh, I don't know if we have any examples I can. Let me change this a little bit. Template. Let's do weekly. OK. So let, let's do an example here. <clears throat> uh, this is a sell zone. The green area is the target. Okay. This is a dead one. Uh, this is the buy zone. The pink is the target. Then it opens out a position. This is the sell zone. The green is the target. The next week is out of position, no trade. The week after that, uh, actually, this is the buy zone. But it would have been sort of luck for you to catch that, but maybe you were bold, right? Uh, this is out of position, but this is this is kind of the buy zone, but I don't think you would have got it unless you were front running. Uh, but the pink is the target. Um, this was actually a buy zone. Didn't quite work. So you might have tried to squeeze that in, but it doesn't look like you would have got that on Monday. Um, so that's not a really good one. Um, this is a good one, though. This is a perfect entry. And the, red, the pink zone is the target. Okay. This is the buy zone. Not a perfect entry. It's close, but the pink area is the target. This is the buy zone. The pink area is the target. And then now we open out a position. And in fact, we open at the target, which is one of the scenarios. By the way, someone asked about counter trend trading. One of the two scenarios I teach 
is in this situation, you would look to sell. Even though it just skyrocketed this much, this is where you'd look to sell. Okay, again, not my opinion, just technical analysis. My opinion is based on whether I should buy CAD yen based on fundamentals. But this is like reading sheet music, right? I didn't write Mozart, I didn't write Beethoven, but I can sit down and play it just like they wanted me to because the notes are there. So I can sit down and it sounds like Beethoven, but it's not my opinion. I'm not making it up. I'm just playing the notes as they're supposed to be played the way that it's written on the sheet. So I open this up and I'm like, yeah, that's a sell, but that's a buy and that's a buy and that's a buy. And this is mediocre and this is mediocre and this is mediocre. Uh, that was a sell. That was a buy. That was a sell. Done. I mean, it's just... It's just there. That's it. It's not even a, not even an opinion. So then you're like, well, how does that make sense? And I'm like, well, you need to know how to trade pivot points and swing trade. Okay. Now to add to that, what did we just do, Kadian? To add to that, I also like monthly pivots, right? Okay. So pink zones are take profit zones, right? Green zones are take profit zones. So you can kind of see like up, 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 up. Everyone here took profit. That's why it's red. You see what I mean? Nathaniel White says, sorry to hate Forex this week. I'm really sorry to hear that. I can't imagine how you'd be better at stocks than with, you know, than Forex. But anyways. Um, so you imagine everyone up here is supposed to take profit and that's why it comes down. Everyone was supposed to take profit here, but they didn't. So that sets up the other counter trend trade, which you see here. Then anyone that bought it, this is where you take profit. And then, you know, pretty close on some of these, but they're profit zones, right? So those are monthly pivots. And what I do is now I combine, and this is the, one of the files I sent you guys in the download. One of the things I do now is I combine the weeklies with the monthlies. So when I see a cluster of, you know, a weekly over top of a, a monthly, right, this is a weekly bottom. So if we had been down there, I would notice that this is a, this green zone is where bears are supposed to take profit and this is where bulls are supposed to buy. So if we happen to get down there, I could say, ooh, this is going to be irresistible. Some people are going to be desperate to take profit, and others are going to be desperate to buy, and so this could be a real changing point. But we're not there now, right? We're here now, up here. And I can say, well, as, as I showed you several times today, I would like it to fall further to an area like this. This is what I would like. This is actually my trade plan I made on Monday. I know it's Friday now. The last Monday we had this coming down to here and then up. Okay. That's my current trade plan. I would still like that. That would be plan A. Uh, plan C is really way down here. Well, this current one is a maybe. And you can see I have it marked. I have a maybe here. You see this? And the maybe is... It's an M3, so it's not the right pivot point on the weekly. And it's an M3 on the monthly. So again, it's a pivot point cluster, but it's not really the right pivots. They're not the ones I'm looking for at the moment. But it could still act like support. And if I'm a bull, this might be it. So this is actually plan a, but plan A is like, well, I don't really want to do it. Plan B, I'd love to take that trade if I'm a bull. Okay? And then you'll see the, the target is up here. What pivot points are telling me is it's not going to happen this week. We're probably going to just simply make it up to here. And it's going to take a while. So it, it, it's iffy. It looks like it's going to probably take maybe a bit of a sideways week. And then maybe a breakout to the upside is what I what I would kind of guess on this. But see, that part is a guess. The rest of it is just factual. This is a better buy zone than that. This is where you take profit. Yeah, those are just facts.
Okay. Michael says, Aziyan, what are the reasons to be bearish? Um, go to the Reserve Bank of Australia website. Download their recent economic report, which I think was six weeks ago. Read their opinion and then make a decision. And you might find that, you know, Aussie N is more down than up. I don't know. You need to do the analysis. Okay. So just so you know, I like one minute charts and five minute charts. I like 15 minute charts. I need, I like hourly charts, four hour charts and daily. Typically I don't even go to daily that often. So most professional traders would find what I do is very short term. There are dozens of people that can confirm that I set my trades up sometimes months in advance. I know what I'm going to be doing in the third week of January right now. I know what I'm going to be doing in March and April right now. I know what I'm going to be doing in July of 2019. I know what I'm going to do in September of 2019. I already know. Okay. So there's a lot to this outside of the 15 minute chart is all I'm saying. Did anyone watch the FX Street interview that I did, I think, maybe two years ago now? It's Christmas time. I'm on a Caribbean island. There's a volcano next to me. And I'm interviewed for an hour, maybe an hour and a half straight. And I explain on a week-by-week -week basis exactly what I will buy and what I will sell and the reasoning for it for six months in advance. And if you've seen that, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where I can say, this is what I'm doing now. This is what I'm getting ready to do. It's the exact opposite. And then that, I'm going to do that for three weeks. And then there's going to be a false rally. And then I'll ride that up. And then I have to resume the long-term trend. And then it goes down. And then we got this. And then we got that. And don't even get me going about Japanese repatriation. And And yet most people are just like, uh, what's the MACD telling me to do? Oh, I bought, I bought the doji. Okay. So think of it once again, it's not, I'm not pitching that I'm, I'm the greatest or something. I'm only suggesting that you need to get to that level too. Because you're trading in an open market with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of traders, most of which are professional, most of which have millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. And you have a, you know, a $2,000 account and you're trading against a hedge fund manager with $2 billion or a central bank or the, the, um, you know, the CFO of IBM. Um, or Coca-Cola or Nike moving money around the world, right? And you're competing against them. You need to get the educated side, the knowledge side. You need to get to the level that I just described where I know what I'm doing in May. I already know. I already know. And yet amateurs are looking at the chart trying to figure out what they're going to do in the next two hours. And obviously there's a disconnect is what I'm saying. So... Take a look at your Forex trading as a career. Look at it as a business. Look at it on the long run where, you know, you want to be in this game for 15 or 20 years, right? So if I'm in year 15, you want to get to year 15 too, right? So you need to have that long-term focus and say, well, this year I need to focus on technical analysis, you know, learn things like swing trading and pivot points and just get that down because that's easy stuff. And then maybe year three or four, you need to start learning fundamentals and start incorporating that in. And then, you know, in year seven or eight, you need to start learning how to trade like a money manager, how to manage other people's money or manage your portfolio and all this kind of stuff to manage risk and have risk adjusted performance. And, and um, you know, you're concerned about volatility and all this kind of stuff um, as a portfolio. Well, that's whole different than what you're doing now as well, right?
and look at it from a really, truly a long-term business. So like when I signed up for this program at Harvard, uh, it was four years. I'm a busy guy. I'm like, okay, it's going to take me 20 or 30 hours a week for four years. Yes, I have a wife. Yes, I have children. Yes, I have a job and a career and other things going on. And on that, I squeeze time in for the school. You might be busier than me, but probably I doubt it. You could, are you willing to commit to Forex for four years and put in 30 or 40 hours a week of not just random trading nonsense stuff, but really focused learning? I think if I could do it at Harvard, by the way, I spent like $20,000 on school like in the last six weeks, right? So if you buy a course at FX Bootcamp for 100 bucks, I mean, come on. It's, it's knowledge, right? And then look at it from a long-term point of view, right? Because it'll get you away from this idea that you need to make a lot of money now. You don't, that mindset is what is holding you back. Yeah, Mark, they're on YouTube. Yeah, Mark, I have something like 4,000 videos on YouTube. That's it. Only 4,000, maybe 5,000, I don't know. Do you recommend naked trading? I love naked trading, but I have one caveat to that. Okay. So I'll naked trade because I love price action. I love price action, but I'm going to add pivot points. I will naked trade, but with pivot points. So the only thing on my chart. So for example, what he's talking about is this. Um, let's go indicators. I'll delete that. I'll delete that. I'll delete that. I'll delete that. And I'll delete that. And if you want, I'll even delete the watermark. <laughs> okay. That's all I need. Because to me, everything is a leading indicator now. I don't even have a, la a lagging indicator on here. That's what naked means, without any indicators. Yeah. So now I have price action, which is leading indicator. Because I can tell you, for example, right, like these levels are support and resistance, right? Right? This level is going to be important. And then, of course, in the future, this level is going to be important. I already have it marked out from earlier, right? So it's all leading. And then the pivot points are looking at the high, low, and close of the previous period and predicting the future. So I only have leading indicators here, and I have enough money to make, or I have enough information here to make money. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I like this so much. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. Let's kill this, kill that, kill that, and now I, oh, there's one here, kill that. I'm going to save this. So if you like a setup and you want to use it over and over and over again in the future, okay, go to, I guess, templates, save template, okay, name it something. I'm going to name it um, uh, WM, oh, that won't work, right? WM weekly, monthly. Um, oh, how about naked chart with WM pivots? Okay. Done. And I can use that in the future. Okay. Yes. So that's all I need. All I have, I don't have any lagging indicators here, and that's enough information to make money. Okay. But, you know, some people find it very helpful to have like a 2155 EMA cross or something like that, right? So they're helpful. MACD is helpful. Stochastics is helpful. They're just algorithms. They don't tell you what to do. 
okay? They're just algorithms that paint squiggly little colored lines places so that you can make decisions. Oh yeah, moderator, uh, can you post that link again to the download? Because we're getting pretty close to the end, huh? This is the end. Yes, when you're downloading it, it will make suggestions like, hey, would you like to take a training course? One of Wayne's training courses. It'll suggest it. It's not ask, It's not forcing you to do anything you don't want. Okay. And then it emails you the, the information. You click download, right? There's a, a video to tell you how to install them. And now you have the files. It's really super simple, guys. Right? I worked at NASA for two years, so I can be considered a rocket surgeon. Um, but you don't have to be to install files into your MT4. Yeah, it was a funny life path. When I was a kid, like when I was 18, I was living in the prairies of Canada. And I said, I need to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I don't belong here. <laughs> I'm not a farmer. I need to get out of here. So by the time I'm um, 20, I'm working at NASA, getting prepared to be an astronaut. Got accepted into the program. After two years of working at NASA, I joined the Navy. My first day of, um, of being in the Navy, you go through medical testing. That was the day I found out I was diabetic. That was the day that the Navy found out I was diabetic. So they kicked me out. I joined, I signed up and everything, but I don't think legally I was ever in. That was the sort of the last filter. I passed the written tests and everything and all that kind of stuff. Great. I was top gun qualified. So they're like, nope, you can't be an astronaut anymore. They gave me a subway token. So there I am, I'm 20. I might have been 19, actually. Sorry, I might have been 19. And anyway, so I'm heading home. I'm like, well, now what am I going to do? And I said to myself, oh, well, I've always wanted to be a businessman too. So I'll just be a businessman. Okay, three years later, I'm running a company of 3,000 people. I'm in New York City for the first time wearing my first suit, going to a board meeting to meet the likes of George Soros, the vice president of General Electric, vice president of Arthur Anderson, guy from the United Nations, and a whole bunch of other people. And I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> so talk about how fast your life can change. You could be living in Saskatchewan. Fast forward, pretty soon you're working at NASA, you're going to fly the, you know, you're going to fly the space shuttle. I've actually docked, in simulation, I've docked the space shuttle at the International Space Station. A year or two before that, I'm, I'm in wheat fields. Then I find out I'm not allowed to work and become an astronaut anymore, so I'm like, I'm going to be a businessman. Fast forward a couple of years, I'm running a company of 3,000 people. Right? You can you can do this whole forex thing. And you might not see how radically your life can change in the next two or three years if you really, if you have a, a ridiculous, sickening work ethic. You can radically, radically change your life in the next two, three years. I know I've I've been blessed to do it two or three times. So once I was done running that big company, I went out on my own in the Silicon Valley. 1995, got a job at Apple. Right? Then I worked at Cisco Systems. They were startups, guys. Then I'm like, oh, I think I'll start my own startup. All of a sudden, I'm in magazines all around the world. This is not Forex stuff. This is startup stuff. Cool, right? So that my work life changed again. Then I made a couple of companies very successful. And then I say, you know what? I'm going to be a Forex trader. It's like the fifth life I've had. So I'm someone that totally buys into the fact that if I find something I think I'm going to love and be passionate about and, and you make a ton of money doing, I'm going to just leech onto it, grab onto it, and I'm going to wrestle it to the ground 
and I am never going to let go. Right? I'm never going to let go. Like the anaconda, right? Can't even physically open its jaws. Even if it wanted to, it can't. Once it bites down, it just goes lock. So I'm wrapped around Forex, locked into it, but I'm doing it with love and passion. I love sitting on the back deck reading newspapers or central bank reports and smoking a cigar and drinking a whiskey or a wine or something or just I it's not it's not a job so much as it is what I am I am a currency trader this is what I do and I love right so that's kind of where you need to get I think and that's the steps you need to go so you know I don't know download my chart templates Start figuring out naked trading and pivot points, then get into swing trading. Maybe you should learn all the basics of Forex from oscillators to moving averages to price action to candlestick patterns to, you know, if you need Andrew's pitchfork, there's stuff up there. But you just get, get super serious. Okay. So this is my 150th non-farm payrolls at Epic Street. That means just this one webinar, I've invested 450 hours doing. What if you spent 450 hours just unbelievably focused on learning how to be a patient, disciplined trader that can make decisions? You see what I mean? What if you spent 450 hours? It's nothing. 450 hours is nothing. Right? So if I do 30 or 40 hours a week of schoolwork, right? Certainly I'm doing 150 hours a month on schoolwork. What's the big deal? That's three months of schoolwork. 450 hours? But you understand if you do it with intent and focus and drive and passion and maybe even fear like, oh, my God, I got to get this because I know it's there. I've seen Wayne's stuff and I, I see that it's possible, it's real, that this can be done. So now I got to get it before it just goes away. right? Like, So you should just freak out. Find, this is your thing. This is it. The, for the person that said, you know, ah, Forex ain't working for me. I'm going to go trade stocks now. That doesn't sound like someone that's incredibly passionate, someone that is laser driven, laser focused, anaconda squeezing, lock jawed on Forex with a ridiculous, sickening work ethic, with a long term focus of treating this as a business. So good luck with stocks, but they ain't going to work either. You can take everything and I teach you here. You can be an oil trader, a gold trader, a Bitcoin trader, for crying out loud. Who knows? But you can take this and go trade the S&P 500. Great. But if you skip all the other stuff, patience, discipline, passion, focus, drive, ridiculous, sickening work ethic, long-term focus, treating your trading like a business, yeah, you're going to fail at stocks or bonds or uh, S&P 500, oil trading, Bitcoin trading. It doesn't matter. You, you, options trading, go ahead. Yeah, you're going to fail at that too. I can't possibly, or, or learning how to play the piano or learning how to be, become a scratch golfer or whatever. It ain't going to happen if you remove all that other stuff. Okay. I hope you do it. I hope you do it. I really hope you do it. Last 10 minutes. Let's bang out a whole bunch of trades. Let's uh, get, let me know what currency pairs. We'll just we'll do we'll do really quick ones. We'll do real quick plans. We'll just bang out a whole bunch. Okay, let me know what currency pairs. Thank you, Tucker. Uh, I'll, 
I never read anyone's book. I wrote a book. But when I first started trading Forex, there was no, there were no Forex books. I'm not joking. There just, there wasn't. All right, pound Oz. I did pound a dollar already, but pound Aussie, huh? Let me try to find that cross. A couple of people pound Aussie, huh? All right, cool. All right, so first thing I look at is the monthly swing. The monthly swing says buy here and take profit at 185.37 or 185.25, I guess it is. So you're just, you're about 40 pips away from taking profit. So I just say, you know what, 185, get out. Okay. But this was an obvious swing um, Looks on Monday. If you're a bull on Monday, that, that was easy. That's just straight up, straightforward right? That, that's your buy zone. Super ridiculously easy on a weekly swing. Now the weekly swing, let me move this, is only is only getting you up here to the, to the box, right? But to incorporate that into the new monthly pivots, monthly pivots are thinking that. So under a typical day, usually what you get is you get the up into here, then the down, and then the up. But NFP took this north. Okay. Could you talk about your swing trading course? Yeah, it's a course. It's 20 hours long. Teaches you how to swing trade. Also gives you the pivot points as well. Mm -mm -mm. Someone's talking about the book. Yeah, I wrote the book uh, 11 years ago. Sold it to Wiley Publishing. Um, and they sell it. It's their book now, not mine. So I don't know what they charge for it. Uh, I think of that, if you buy it brand new, I think I make like five bucks. So I don't, I, we were talking about this actually the other day. Um, I think I got a $5,000 signing bonus or a $10,000 signing bonus, I can't remember. So they bought the rights. And then I threw a party and I spent like $120,000 on the party. <laughs> so there you go. I, I, I wouldn't write books to get filthy, stinking rich, but I can party. How about 3,000 people wine and beer at a Forex Trading Expo? So, but I, I don't price. It's not my book. I only wrote it. Okay, so anyways, up and up. There wasn't much else, especially when you get through this breakout. Like, let's say you were a bear. The only way you could have looked at it is you had a very short-term sell here on Monday but you very quickly got stopped out, and that's that. Yeah, Tucker bought it used on Amazon for five bucks. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't make anything. Be aware, it is. People have said it's the worst book ever written. Not the worst forex book or the worst trading book. But of out of the billions of books ever written by mankind, mine is the worst. Um, but it is my first book. And yeah. So anybody else? Let's let me go back. Kiwi, Euro Yen. Uh, let's do Euro Yen. Yeah, I think I, I didn't do Euro Yen yet. I have met him. Uh, the only story, there's two stories. He got banned from conferences, I think. So don't get, I don't know. This was so long ago, so I don't mean. But anyways, I, uh, anyways, one day he came up to me, and I, I, I had a booth. I had like 30 or 40 people in my FX Boot Camp booth. They're all volunteers. They all fly out to help me. So, And he came up to me, and he said, um, we should do – a course together. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, well, we can make a lot of money. And I said, well, I already have a lot of money. <laughs> and he looked at me and his, he just went pale. He's looking at me. And so, he, so he gave me his business card and walked away. <laughs> It was funny. It was just funny.
but uh, candlestick patterns. So let me tell you about candlestick patterns. We have so little time. Let me tell you about it. Okay? Here we go. The number one thing you need is support and resistance. So let's say you say that's resistance and this is support and this is support. Okay? Just boom. We're going fast, right? If you see a, a reversal pattern at these areas, you know what? Let, let, let me do this one a little bit different. Let's do a little bit nicer. Okay? If you see a reversal pattern at these areas, trade the reversal. Okay? If you see a reversal pattern and you're not at one of these places, don't trade it. Don't trade the reversal pattern. So what I'm saying is support and resistance supersedes anything, uh, even candlestick patterns. In fact, they create the candlestick patterns. So if you're watching it rise up to this price, you can zoom in and, and then you can tell me what is your favorite candlestick pattern? Three pregnant nuns, right? Dog with bucket. The, the freaky doll pattern, what, whatever pattern you like. How about um, morning star, evening star, uh, what else? Dojis, a one, two, three patterns, head and shoulders patterns, ABCDs, ABCs. I mean, none of it matters. Okay? None of it matters. Um, it's all way overblown. The most important thing here is you've identified support and resistance. Now to take that further, I like support and resistance, right? Where's the, where's the naked one? And I like pivot points. So I would do it that way and say, well, if I see a reversal pattern at places, I anticipate a reversal in the future, then it'll probably work. Danish women with three elbows. That's a, that's a really good pattern. Okay, you understand this? It's not the pattern that will make you money. It's the fact that you did your analysis first and you said, hey, in the future, if we find ourselves up here, I should probably look to sell. And then when you drop into a small time frame, wait, that was a weekly chart. I'm too far out now. Uh, let's do it again. Let's, okay, well, this is fine. Okay. If I find myself up at that gray line, which I just drew, so now we're, we're talking weeks in advance. If I get up here, I, am, I would like to sell. Okay. So how, how could you do it? You could sell the hanging man. You could sell the double top. You could sell the double top lower low, I think some people call them ABCs or one, two, threes. I like to sell the lower low, lower high scenario, which gives you the fib move, okay? Or anything else in between, but none of it mattered. The only thing that changes is the level of risk you're taking. This is riskier, this is less riskier, this is less riskier than that. So aggressive trade, moderate trade, easy trade. But none of it made you money. What made you money was you backed out and you said, hey, I'm a seller up at this price zone. You made a decision. The rest is just nonsense. You think my book's expensive? Buy his book. It's like 500 pages. I think it was like $300. Shoot, makes my $50 book look cheap. But what you need to do is sell it resistance and buy it support. And how you do it, what if you don't use candlestick patterns? What, do you, what if you use moving averages? So if it comes down here and then you get a 5A cross up, buy it. Great. Just as good as a candlestick pattern. Or what if it comes down here and an oscillator moves over? RSI or stochastics or MACD or Arun or CCI or it doesn't matter. You're at support. If it tells you to buy it, buy it. Okay? Doesn't matter, guys. 
either you're making it too complicated or the people around you are making it too complicated. I'm trying to tell you that you could trade this with simply pivot points and naked charts because they're leading indicators. The lagging indicators add levels of finesse but are certainly not required, right? So what you really need to know is you need to learn how to trade. It's not MACD is not going to make you a better trader. Stochastics is not going to make you a better trader. Learning how to hedge or use options or, you know, this, it's not going to make you a better trader. You need to learn how to be a better trader. That's something I can teach you. And then you can be good. Trade anything you want. Go trade the S&P 500. Bro, you're a good trader. You can do it. But if you fail here, you're going to fail there too. So why, why switch, right? So like what I talk about is you need to be a confident trader to be a profitable trader. You have to have confidence. Confidence comes from consistency. Consistency comes from control. Control comes from things like planning and the, having the skill to plan and having the skill to carry out your plan. So if I can teach you that stuff, the asset class you trade is irrelevant. You could trade soybean meal like a champion, right? But you need to know how to be a trader and a good trader. Mediocrity is not acceptable, right? Right? You think they let mediocrity into school? Right? Something like a 3% acceptance rate. Except my program was harder to get into. So you can do this. Do you need to be wicked smart? No. Do you need to outsmart the market? No. Do you need to be have more tools and more resources and more analysts than a hedge fund manager? No. Do you need to be the CFO of Apple Computer to get inside information? No. You need a ridiculous, sickening work ethic, and you need to work with people that know what the hell they're doing. Part of my French. So what, what's my ch take on scalping? I spent one year trading the one-minute chart exclusively. One year. I love it. In fact, every trade I ever, I ever enter, every trade, I don't care if it's a swing trade for a month, every trade I enter is essentially a scalp. The, pro the difference is when I enter a scalp, it's involved with a swing trade. So I'm very disappointed if I scalp and make less than 100 pips. And you'll say, well, Wayne, that's not really a scalp. Well, I enter my scalp, but I have a bigger trade plan, but I enter it like a scalp. I need to get in very short, refined, very refined entries at key levels of support and resistance, and then I need to manage that risk, okay, and let it run. Now, if I go through a, a tough period, I use that OCO oscillator that I included in the download, and what I'll do is I'll put that on like a 25-25 OCO, and I'll use that to just kind of warm up and practice. So I'll take that shot. I'll either make 25 pips or I'll lose. It doesn't matter. And I'll do three, four, or five of those and get kind of warmed up. Or I'll even do 15-15 OCOs. I can do 15-30 OCOs, 10-10 OCOs if I'm really crazy, that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, scalping will not make you filthy, stinking rich. The guy that is selling you a scalping course that drives the yellow Lamborghini, scalping didn't make him enough money to buy the yellow Lamborghini. Let me just put it that way. Scalping, and I can prove it mathematically, you will never get filthy stinking rich. It's a dead end. It's fun and it's useful. And I, like I said, I use the scalping techniques to scalp into a proper trade plan. But the only way, only way to make serious money in any sort of trading, but especially Forex, is letting your winners run. And scalping by definition doesn't do that, so it's a, it's a dumb idea. But having the skill to say, let's see if I can do this. Having the skill to say, I want to sell in this gray zone there. So you drop into a 15 minute chart. Now I've got to find it, okay? And now, see I can't go back that far, a 15 minute chart, but anyways, let, let me see if I can do it, okay? So now you're in here and you want to sell. Imagine this on a five-minute chart or a one-minute chart. You already know you want to sell, bro. You already know. So let's see if we can find this. 
Um, uh, it's too difficult now. It's too much time has passed. Um, and this is always difficult with MT4. Um, that's kind of where we are now. Um, you know, yeah, it, look, again, once again, if you know your trade plan, if you know where the support and resistance is, there you go. Yeah, th this is crazy scalpable, huh? Right? This is crazy scalpable. Over and over and over and over and over again. There's trades there. There's a trade there. This rolls out and breaks out. Roll reversal, roll reversal, roll reversal. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But you remove the solid trade plan from your scalping. All you're doing is working really, really hard and probably not making very much money. Okay? And I guess now I've gone over, so I apologize for that. All right? So, guys, listen. Lower your lot size. Take less risk. Focus on the long term. Let your winners run. Learn fundamental analysis. Learn some basic technicals. You don't need to get crazy. Um, please visit tradersway.com and open an account there. On Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday of next week, I work with Traders Way clients in live webinars. So if you enjoyed the last three hours, we can spend five hours next week together doing something very, very, very similar. Okay, so please do that. Um, the link for the download is available. If you're not getting the emails, um, I will have the programmers go through and verify things and we will follow up with you. But many people have done it properly. Um, there are deals to FX Bootcamp training courses. So if you want some coupon codes and, and stuff like that, it's in that download link, hint, 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 or just visit traders or uh, visit FX Bootcamp if you want to know more. Um, oh, in that download link, you are offered a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with an experienced trader that can analyze your, your, your setup, analyze your trading strategy, answer questions about trading and strategy and fundamentals and technicals, uh, or just to work with you to ensure that all those files you downloaded have been installed correctly and are working correctly. And if you want, ask questions like, how do I trade this and how do I trade that? All absolutely, totally for free because, well, frankly, I love you. You're my sweet baby and I care about you. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, FX Street. Namaste. NFP 150, huh? Woohoo! 150, 12 and a half years. Isn't that awesome? I mean, hooray! I've had four hours sleep. I care about you guys, seriously. I'm trying to build the things and provide them to you that you need to succeed. My relationship with FX Street is amazing. 450 hours of content, just these webinars alone, but I've done many other things with them and I'd like to do more things with them. Um, they have a lot of speakers now and they never ask me anymore. They're sick of me. Um, but, and you know, almost every time FX Street says we should work together, I say yes. And then I go, well, what do you want to do? Okay. I love FX Street. Thank you guys. I love this webinar. I like working with you guys every day. Um, I'm telling you, without you guys, trading can get boring, uh, pointless sometimes. Um, you can get old in what you do and you, you start to lose interest in staying refined and staying sharp and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm, you know, creating these tools keep me sharp and makes me focus on like, why do I do this? Why do I do that? And so you're good for me. You're good people. Um, I like you. And thank you for all the loyalty and respect uh, that you do show me day after day, week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year, and decade after decade. It's crazy, right? So, I don't know. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you sign up at tradersway.com. If so, I will see you Monday. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Cheers.